Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing. You know my day. I walk on. Man, hey man, we got a special guest in here today, man. He really don't need no introduction, man. If you're watching YouTube, man, you see Country Wayne, any of these other platforms. I even seen him. I look like he was on the news almost <laughs> with it. He was at some magazine and all kind of stuff, man. Michael Anthony. Yes, sir. What's going on, man? What's up, man? What's man, up, family? Good to see you, man. Good Thank you for coming. Man. Thanks for having me. For yeah, sure. man. So I know uh, the way we usually start, we got a little way that we start, man. We on, hey, make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel, man. We trying to blow this thing up, man. Yes, sir. I always say like the World Trade Center, but that's really blowing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's not a bad. good example. That's not right? a good example. <laughs> you don't want to blow up like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just tell us a little, a little bit about yourself, man. Let's get mm-hmm. into it, right? Yes, yeah, so we want to take it way back, not just a little bit from a year ago. Uh-huh. We need to take it way back as a child coming up. We want to know all of that. Oh, man. Ooh, we going back to Akron, <laughs> Ohio, Spring Hill, uh, West Side, Akron, Ohio, Spring Country. Hill Projects, right by LeBron J, same street. Really? really? Yep, East Avenue, same wow. street. That's, That's dope. That's cool. That's mm-hmm. dope, dope. Did you know the family? I mean, I I ain't gonna say we we wasn't like best friends, but you know, I I definitely um, saw him. You know, I went to his I went to his, I've been to his house before, well, not house, but when they stayed in the projects. Okay. Yeah, I've been over there before. Always just was just a different dude. You mm-hmm. know, you already knew. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it wasn't like, oh my God, like you knew this you dude knew. is the only eighteen year old in the world you can give two hundred million dollars to, and they're gonna change him. Wow. Special. Wow. special. And that's he, rare. Yeah, that very rare. he did that elementary school. That impressed me. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. like when you start dealing with the kids and and trying to find ways to you know do something that's that impactful. Mm-hmm. When you start dealing with trying to make sure that you place yourself in the midst of it, that's where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like everybody don't do that. Most people trying to find out something to try to push themselves up high. Not to try to, you Jordan, know. Jordan. Ah, uh, you knew I was going to this. <laughs> so. I am not a Jordan fan at wow, all. Wow, why not? I am not. I, I was always a Shaq and Kobe fan. Never a Jordan fan. Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I was a Jordan fan. fan. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I was a Jordan fan I'm too. Not to play with y'all. Was. No, I was a Jordan <laughs> fan too, but you made LeBron, you know. I like the underdogs. I remember... Okay, I went to a, I went to a game with him with his mom and my boy Dre back in the day. Shout out to Dre Gut and Glow. Went to the game with them. He was I think he was a senior, okay. and it was like, you know, everybody was there. They had, they had the reps sitting with her, Nike, Jordan, and all them. How old was he then? He was seventeen. Okay, cool. High school senior. And I'm like, man, this dude watching him. I'm like, oh my god, like, this dude is, you know. After the game, we went back to a spot. Me, Dre, and Glow. LeBron went to eat with the reps, you know. So he came to the house. This is, not, this is why I will fight somebody in the bar about LeBron James. <laughs> he came to the house. He came in here like a start. Now, mind you, they poor. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he owned all these magazines. They live in Spring Hill Projects, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He come home and he has a styrofoam that has shrimp and, st- you know, all the stuff he got from the fixings from the restaurant. He sat it down in front of his mom. He opened it up. It was full. It hadn't been touched. He went to the the cabinet. He put out some oatmeal, instant oatmeal. Put some water in it, heated up. He ate that. Wow. And I was like, he didn't. He ain't going. She said he always do that. He when he gets whatever they give him, something, he just bring it to me. And he just eat what we got. Oh. That boy so, don't stay humble, man. So from that point, so that's why I get I get personal out nah, on Facebook. You should. I'd be like, y'all, hey, meet me at uh, meet me at Wild House. <laughs> Nobody ain't meeting LeBron. you, Mike. Mike, nobody's meeting you, bro. <laughs> I didn't know you were this big, man. No, I ain't nobody meeting you, man. You, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I'm a I'm a friend. I'm a, I'm a I'm a teddy bear, man. <laughs> Whatever. So have you always been this big growing up? I was always taller, and I was big. I was fighting boys. Way older than me growing up. My mom, it's funny, uh, she apologized to me. She was like, baby, I'm so sorry. You know, she was had me fighting these boys that she had no idea. It was like six or seven years older than me because I was the same size as them. Damn. But it helped me because, you know, people she my age. She had you fighting them. Oh, my mom was a gangster. My mom ain't playing no game. That sounds like that movie I saw where um, the mama took took him back out there and be like, no, you going to fight. Come on, we going to fight. That's her. You yeah. got, no, she locked the door. Go out there and handle that. 
She ain't trying to hear it. Did not. you ever? And if you ever lost a fight, what would she do? Oh, I lost. Cause I was losing all of them because they was they was so much stronger than me. <laughs> that we just was the same side. Like, yeah. It was older, you know. But she would sit there. She told me. She said, she said, baby. Because I was like, man, mom was cold. But she said, you know, I used to watch you get out there and just get your butt whipped. And she said, I would just turn my face and cry and leave you out there because I knew. You know, you're a black man, so you had to... You had to deal with... Life you have to endure. Mm -hmm. So where was daddy during all this time? He was in my life, but he was... He had moved to um, Ohio. They, mm -hmm. got, they had they got divorced, separated. He moved to Ohio. So she knew because she was a single mother. And how old were you when they got divorced? I was 10. 10? Mm -hmm. How did it affect you when he left? Uh, I think it affected... I think... I think divorce, now that I look back on it as an adult, I think it does affect mm -hmm. how we view relationships, how we deal in relationships. Um, but he was there. You know, I'm, I, I can't sit here and say my, my father was definitely there. You know, he, he just had to go out there and get his, you know, get himself together and get a job and everything. Because he was, we was, doing, we was doing bad, man. You know, we was, mm -hmm. it was rough. So, But it made you into the person that you are today. Exactly. Yep. So you wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world? I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. I ain't, listen, my mom, like, my mom was a gangster. And, <laughs> And but she taught me, you know, it, it was a balance. She was rare because you know she would teach love and integrity, and and but she just was like, you ain't finna be no punk. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, you had brothers and sisters. A little sister. A little sister. So you yeah. the only boy. I'm the boy. Me and so it was me, two boy cousins, and like twenty girls. Oh, so okay. we was always fighting. Like when I would go to Ohio, my uncle Gerald, shout out to Uncle Gerald. He probably gonna laugh when he see this, but he would have a list. Cause I, cause I, I lived in Buffalo, so when I would go to Ohio, he pick me up from the from the Greyhound bus station, and say, "All right, this boy did this to your cousin." He had a list, mm. <laughs> and I had to go fight these boys. It's a wonder you didn't end up being a boxer or something. Else. I fought. I, I did mixed martial arts. You did. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got into that? That was two thousand three. I was a Scambia County um, DT champion in Scambia County. Come so on, you didn't mom. lose any more fights after that. Oh, I lost. <laughs> when you win, you lose. See, people don't, people don't know about the mixed martial arts fighting. You know, you win, but you still lose. Yeah. How? You get you beat up. Yeah, because oh. of the injuries. Yeah, yeah when you yeah. block a punch, yeah. see, people, when, when when you watch it on TV and somebody block a punch or a kick, you're like, oh, he blocked it. But this it still hurt. Your hurt. Yeah, it hurt you. It, it hurt she you. Is, you know. Let's go in a tub of ice after you get done. Man, listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I, I, so you when you was young like that and and coming up, you said the projects mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. so how are the projects up there? Was it like every other project when you hear Calio or when you hear about the projects here in Dallas? Mm -hmm. You know whether it be uh, over there at Bon Ton Double O Seven mm -hmm. in the South or, or or when you hear about stuff like when you was go to Atlanta, yeah, like or in yeah. Vegas when we li we lived in mm -hmm. Doolittle when I lived in Vegas. Uh -huh. So how, how is it like far as the projects where you were from? Uh, in New York, it was you know the, the buildings were high, so it was more condensed. I think that's where the violence was so different because it was like you really couldn't get away from people. You know, it's like y'all in a building, y'all live up on top of each other, so you got these small stairwells and, some, and elevators, and you know, pretty bad, pretty bad. The building I live in now, we got concierge. <laughs> <laughs> so, ain't no fight going on there, but you know, ain't no security. It's just you know, yeah, right. you had to deal with your problems. I think it made, like I said, made me who I am today because you had to. It wasn't no running from it. You had to deal with it. You got yeah. a bully, you know. You gonna see him every day in the elevator. So you gonna, you, you gonna have to throw some salt in his eye and get him out the way. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you got to work. Got to fight dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I stayed in Vegas. I never forget it. I, I used to have to fight every day a lot of times in the mm -hmm. projects because they were gonna bring it every day. You go outside, every there's day. somebody looking to get to you and bring it. A lot of times you were starting it though. Oh, yeah. Now she was there from the beginning, y'all. Yeah. Go ahead, tell yeah. us. You no, know, she was not there from the beginning. <laughs> that was when I was young. I heard the stories. No, I know all no, of the stories. No, he looked no. like a fight star. No, we, we like just, yeah. When you, yeah. when you basically, when you're around all of these people, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You got to keep yourself amused some kind of way. He was the bully. Now we know the bully. We know who the bully was. Not a bully. Not a bully just always trying to figure out who who was tripping in the neighborhood. He was just meddlesome. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's not, So most of my fights, when I was younger, all of my fights about me always because I was kind of like Chris Rock did. I was say the wrong joke. And I, I would like mess with people. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't mean no harm. But, you know. I yeah. was just messaging you. Then when you get mad and say, you threaten me, I'm like, what's up? I just got to get it. As you talk about that, Chris, 
Right, because I can oh, event. Bring I was, that up I was now? gonna event. He brought it up, so I'm gonna go ahead and tackle it right now. <laughs> what are your views on what happened at the Oscars with Chris Rock and Will Smith? Wait a minute, I don't want to ask him like that because I heard his views. I went on his Instagram, <laughs> like, well, but 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 I understood what he was saying and and your perception of it. But mm. but, but I don't end, know what he. Said. I know we about to get into it, but it just was funny to me how you broke it down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's too. You know okay, what? Go ahead. So being an actor has taught me. To be a more empathetic person. Okay, you know what I'm that's that's right. And also, when my mom transitioned and went to heaven, I went through this phase of life where I was like kind of mad at God, you know, mm-hmm. because I didn't realize that death is a misunderstood reality. So I had separate. You can't separate from God, first of all. Mm-hmm. You think you can, you know, but you can't. But I went on this, you know, I just was like, ah, I wasn't praying, I wasn't doing nothing. And then once I got back, it came back to life, and really, I went on this spiritual journey across the world. You know, I just became more empathetic and, and realized that, man, it's, it's everybody has a lens they're looking through. Exactly. You know, it makes me treat my woman different because I understand that this is a woman and she ain't supposed to look at it like I'm looking at it. You know, I done bought her this watch and $14,000 watch and this room, this cabin and took us a trip to here and do all this stuff. And then she said, baby, you didn't give me any flowers. And my mind, like, what the hell are you talking about some damn flowers for, girl? <laughs> That's a Cartier watch. Mm-hmm. But but she don't care about that. That's, that's her lens. Right. So, with all that being said, mm-hmm. I look through. I look at both guys. I am a, Wayne is turning me into a comedian. I've, I've always been a comedian, like a hood comedian. My partners thought I was funny in my family. But Wayne is cultivating me to becoming a real comedian where you go on stage and he's, he, he, I'm in training. Right. You yeah. know, he's got me into the skits, as we all know. And he's, I've always been funny but he's like teaching me to put it out there and, and be it. confident and yeah. say hey you know what I'm a comedian so even before that I've always loved the art of comedy okay not this new shit yeah mm-hmm. I'm talking about the real comedy where you go up there and you say anything the Patrice O'Neal's the Corey Holcomb's the Faison Love yeah. the, Bernie, you know, Bernie Mac the Bernie that. Max mm-hmm. the Robin, D.L. Hughes Robin, Robin, yeah Robin, Robin Williams yeah, yeah Robin Williams you know this, so that's real comedy comedy is Comedy is the thing that hurts or the thing that we don't really want to say it because we know that we know that lady is, mm-hmm. uh, we don't want to say fat. Yeah, yeah, she big. Somebody might want to say this, but we know it. Mm-hmm. Like the picture of, I'm going to get to Will Smith, but the picture of the lady from the Me Too movement. Y'all know who she is? Go to I your phone. So. Yeah. You know what she look like? Me Too movement. Say, who started the Me Too movement? Damn. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what comedy is. Uh, the, the Me Too movement. You both just see it. These are, oh, so, oh, damn! <laughs> now y'all see that? That's comedy. Okay. Wow. She said okay. It, but, she, but, that's, but I'm a woman. It's different. See, different lens. Now comedy is this. I took her picture, and I was trying to prove a point to somebody, and I posted it in my stories. I said, "This is the woman who started the Me Too movement." That's all I said. And a bunch of women came in my comments and was like, oh, don't you, you know, you better not, don't mm-hmm. you dare, da, 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 da. And I said, you know what y'all just did? All I said was, this is the woman that started the Me Too movement. Mm-hmm. And because you think she's unattractive, you try to push it on me. Mm-hmm. Comedy is the truth. <laughs> right? The truth that nobody want to say. So mm-hmm. that's my job. That's that's the job. My job is to say the things that we all know, but we don't want to say, say it. Because it because if I'd have posted Beyonce and said this is the one who started Me Too movement, they wouldn't have said nothing. Nothing mm-hmm. at all. So they so that's what the audience is. That yes, the audience is the people that say that's not right. You shouldn't say that. And I'm the person that says, look at this motherfucker's face. <laughs> that's a comedian. That's what make Dave Chappelle. It makes you a superhero, right? Yeah. So I understand. We looking at Jada. And she bald headed. Right. Now, I don't. I, it's not a big deal to be bald headed nowadays. Nowadays it doesn't matter. She beautiful. But Chris Rock was just trying to be funny. Exactly. Yeah. He made fun of other people, right? Made fun of people, and that's a light joke. Now here's the thing: What if she had cancer? This is the risk about comedy. What if she had cancer? Wow. You see what I'm saying? It's a risk. Yeah. That's comedy is a very. You think rapping is comedy is dangerous. Right. Very dangerous. Because I got to just say it. If I see, if Wayne sees something, if we do a skit and I come in there and anything off, 
you know that could offend somebody. No, no, he's he gonna, gonna say, say it. it. <laughs> if I got a bump, right? He gonna, gonna say it. He'll say, "Don't, don't have it for the skit." I'm gonna say something. That's his job. That's what mm. makes it special as a comedian. But anyway, so let's say that was the case, right? We're the human being. Now that wasn't the case. It was alopecia. Right. Here's what really happened. What really happened is, and I'm about to go deep in that one on Instagram. Will Smith already said, man, since I was a kid, I always felt weak because I watched my mama get hit and I ain't do nothing about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I felt like a coward. He said that. Now you fast forward. So that, uh, I, your get, woman I see where you're going with it. Goes on to the Red Table Talk. Until later, we talking about this Will Smith, $30, $40 million a movie. We, looking, we like, oh my God. So we can hide behind that a little bit. Yeah. Then your woman come out and say, you know, I got this younger guy. My man don't even please me in the bed no more. So now, let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. If LeBron James, if if Savannah came out and said, LeBron is six foot nine, 270 pounds, but he got a Vienna sausage. <laughs> I ain't calling the nigga King James no more. <laughs> it just kind of take, you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, it. LeBron got a little, oh man. Right? right? So now, Will is back into that space again. Wow. Watching his mom because now your wife is putting it to the world and everybody on him. Man, Will, you a sucker. Man, you a bitch. Man, you a hoe. Man, this, this man from Philadelphia. Born and raised. Yeah, I'm on the playground. <laughs> the playground <laughs> where I spent most of my day. So it's something in there. You know what I'm saying? And he's an alpha because to get to that point, you got to be an alpha to get to LeBron, Michael Jordan. It's something in you. Yeah. So now, here I am in front of the world. He's telling the jokes, and that's what we do. He, he's he's a celebrity. We laugh, <laughs> and I look over, and I see her reaction, and she's hurt. My mama getting hit. What am I gonna do? Cause if he wouldn't have slapped him, we would have said, "Man, Will's a bitch, man. Look at he talking about his wife and shit. She all sad. You laughing? Yeah. So it was like the pressure's on. I got this is very inappropriate." I didn't do that. I'd be a, I'd be the benign in, in at a funeral one time, so I can't judge nobody. <laughs> but this is inappropriate. But I got to go slap fire this man. When I beat that man at the, at the funeral, I knew it was inappropriate. But I said, I got to lock the door. I'm outside with the bully. I got to do this. Wow. So we was put into a position. So was it inappropriate? And then Will Packer is my man. That's my big bro. Will Packer, Will the first Packer, person on yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. So I felt bad it happened. On his day. Because he basically had produced, pr- it. produced it. And Will's a great guy. And I was like, damn. But I understand. You can't put me in a... I don't care where we at. You know what I'm saying? And and, and like I said, Chris Rock wasn't wrong. Yeah. He doing his job. He's a comedian. Comedians... Who do Wayne talk about all the time? His family. His family. His self. His self. And he being real. Like, I, did, I was with Wayne one time on the road, right? And we went to... He got a new baby mama, went to her house. The lady came in there with the child support thing, $4,000. I had, I was one of the people that signed it, saying, we here, showed our ID, da 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 And the girl was saying, I'm going to sue you. They got to a little back and forth and this and that. And then we went to the show. And that night, he was like, hey, y'all. This the reason why this is the first city, y'all, because I found I got a baby mama here, so I thought I'd come here and use this money to pay child support. <laughs> Everybody laughing, but I'm like, this is really, this really, really happening. happening. Right. That's comedy. But you see, when people take, when he tell a joke like that, people are looking at it like, he not really serious. They think it's just a joke. It's serious. Yeah. Everything Wayne's on that stage is for but real. But you got to understand, man, just, just tapping into what happened with well, Will again. I have a question about that. Do you think that Will should apologize? Um, he should apologize because he was wrong, but he was right. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, it sounds crazy. He was wrong technically. Because what he did ain't really had nothing to do with Chris Rock. Yeah. So what I would say is, Chris, man, listen, bro. You know how this world is we live in. I've I've done I've done I've been the perfect, I've been almost Jesus all this long. Yeah, he didn't even curse in the rap. I ain't even cursing my rap, Chris. And everybody, my girl telling everybody I got a little thing. Yeah. She messing with August Alcina. My kids and they I don't know what the hell they got going on. And everybody clowning me. And you came at the wrong time, bro. I'm That's, sorry. Is that how he's supposed to apologize right there? <laughs> bro. <Bruh, you, laughs> That's a hell of an apology. <laughs> God damn. Because it's like it's not Chris fault. No, it's not. It's not. All that was all that stuff I talked about, that was that was that. 
Because that's what, what a comedian's supposed to do. Yeah. 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 And when I heard the um when I heard the joke, it wasn't distasteful because mm. at the same time he might not have known that she had alopecia. He didn't know. Right. He didn't know she had so alopecia. you couldn't really mm. just blame him for something. But like at the that. end of the day, it happened. Like. Now how do we pay? How do how are we going to move on? And Will now? was laughing. Will, Will was, was laughing. smirking when he walked away. Well, he laughed. The smirk was no. When he walked away, yeah. after he slapped him. I seen that. But the smirk was. I beat the man to hit my mama. I That's what it. it was. I did it. It was like I'm a man because we've been we have been tearing Will's masculinity down as a society. All the black folk out there that say he was wrong, we have been tearing Will down. Yeah, yeah. We've been tearing him down. But oh, we know man. he slapped a dude one time. Pop, pop. That you know, was when right dude tried to, back. Yeah, but he, yeah, but he, he, he said, I should have went on and whooped this nigga. He slapped the Certainly, pebbles out of Chris Rock. Man, ass. nigga said a lot of stuff when he ain't around. I but wonder when how he didn't the end up on the ground, though. Hmm? It wasn't that but hard. But I said, he, he should have been no, on the ground, a, bro. Nah, he, he should have been. He should have. He didn't. See, if he'd have popped him on the whole. See, he got to pop him inside the head. He knows. See? Yeah. He was dead on his plate. Yeah, when you going to take him all the way out. Yeah. You gotta hit him on the side because that temple and that impact. But you, when you slap him right here, it's disgrace. And keep the hand open. It's, see, he kept his hand. It's, it's just a nice. It's a loud. It's loud. It's just a pop. It's a warning. It's just a pop. Cause it sounded really loud. It was no. Nah, it didn't hurt him. It didn't. It, hurt it's him. a shock. When you hit somebody like this with this, you hit him with these hair. That's just a little. I'm gonna let you know. I really don't respect you. Yeah. When you hit him with all this. Yeah. See them. See them calluses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when you put them calluses across that nigga. Pit. And nigga ear you gonna ring. The head off the and nigga ear gonna ring and everything. He, he don't better be able to talk no more. <laughs> when you knock his head off his neck, <laughs> the body will fall. Hey, Amen. How many yeah. times did you? Because everybody did it. I watched it over and over again. How many times did you pause? I, yeah, I, I was like, rewind, yeah, you get that nigga. I seen Chris kind of lean into it. All of that. Just because people were wondering, was the stage? Was nah. it fake? Was it real? It was beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the form, beautiful. The form was beautiful because Will, see, as a fighter, when he popped him, see, most people, they just throw this. Will had the hand up. If you watch it, watch oh. it again, he, he popped it with the, so I that training. That. I said, ooh, Will could fight. Chris Lucky, he ain't try to fight back. He whooped his ass. Yeah, well, that bring up another subject. Let me say this. That, that bring up another <laughs> subject. Exactly that boy what Shannon thought. Sharp said that uh, if he, listen, Shannon Sharp said it would, couldn't have been him nah. because he said if he'd have came up there and he'd have hit him, he said, oh, we'd have told that place up. Everybody you can't say that. Say that. Then he said, then he said, and every time I see him, it'll be on sight. Yeah. Right. But right. Shannon's a different type of dude. That's Shannon Sharp. You ain't even need, <laughs> first of all, you ain't even go try to slap Shannon Sharp if you got good sense. He ready. He is a country boy. <laughs> you ain't slapping no country boy across his face. I'm a country boy. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll get to you. You got it, to. It, yeah, yeah. It's gonna happen. If I, if I see you, I can get to you. Everybody said that they would fight. Everybody who's seen it. I can get to you. If I can get to you, you can get it. I wouldn't have let him walk away. Well. So why do you think that Chris didn't it's retaliate? It's Chris Rock. Chris Rock playing never had no fight in his life. You even slapped T.K. Kirkland. It, 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 yeah, T.K. Kirkland gonna come over with it. You even slapped Corey Holcomb. Mm -mm. You was not gonna slap Corey Holcomb. I you didn't even slap Deion Cole. Y'all can say they won't. Deion Cole in the tub. He from Chicago. You ain't slapping Deion Cole. You damn sure ain't slapping Mike Epps like that. <laughs> Man, you damn sure ain't slapping Country <laughs> Wayne because I'm gonna come out there and strangle your ass. <laughs> but it's <laughs> over, right? Not so, even Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin would have fought. Oh, hell yeah. Man, that, Chris Rock don't come from that world. But he does do a lot of talking, like he really about that, you know, like he just, yeah, he don't mind. He don't talk, he don't talk like he was my ass. It really be the white crowd he trying to appeal it's to. Just, but it's, but he speak up for us to the white crowd. Yeah, yeah. Chris Rock is like Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle ain't gonna fight you. If he mm -hmm. slapped Dave Chappelle, he, the same shit would've happened. Damn. Dave Chappelle ain't gonna fight, but they are, their strength is in what they're saying. They're brave. Like to me, Chris Rock is still, I still look at him, you know, who is hard? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I don't know if I would still respect them. I do re respect Chris Rock because I know who he is. Yeah, but you know? what about do, what? Where does his career go from here? Because I heard them tickets done doubled now. I heard they of up course. to four hundred now. <laughs> I heard they went from seventy dollars to four hundred. Of course, because they, because they know he's gonna talk about it. Mm -hmm. We want to hear him talk about it. He gonna he he. Chris Rock is a real comedian. He gonna talk about it. He's not gonna get on stage and talk about everything, but that he gonna be like he gonna make it funny. Because that's what, that's what we do. And he not going to yeah. put it on social media or nothing. You're going to pay to come see it. He going to be like, and by, after, that's the, that's the good thing about comedy. Comedians don't stay in the doghouse long like rappers do. 
Mm. You know, rappers got to be tough and all that shit. I used to be a rapper. Yeah, I we don't get into that. I love this life so much better. It's way better? It's better. Because I, I can just express... Comedians are expressive. I don't got to wear sunglasses in the club in the dark. No, that stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? We can really talk about our real feelings. So when Chris talk about he's going to talk about how scared he was, how shocked he was, and it's going to be funny because funny is the truth. Like right. I said earlier, it's true. He ain't going to just tell everybody else it's true. He talked about him cheating on his wife. Yeah, 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 he did. That's what com comedy is. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, crazy. He'll be all right. Let me ask you about the rap. You brought it up a little bit, so let's get into it. I seen you, man. I seen you. Not only on rap, it seemed almost R&B ish. Yeah, R&G, you know rhythm yeah. gangster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, that way. I said, damn, he going in. Because at first I looked at it and I seen gunplay on there. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, he better go in. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Then when I listened to it, we started listening. I just let it play. and Because it kept going after you put it and on the playlist. It's always about the ladies. Yeah, so of course. What, what, um, <laughs> how, did you, how did you end up linking with gunplay? I was, I was trying to figure it out. You was hanging with Rick Ross and gunplay them down there some kind of way? Nah. Um, I was like the Nate dog of Florida. Okay. So I was a street dude, but I sang. So mm -hmm. all the hooks... With Iceberg and Briscoe and you know what I mean anybody had something coming out Tom G all the different Florida rappers uh, Papa Duck you know I was the guy that would give them hooks and you know Go sing in. about the gangster shit yeah 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 so, and then, so did you how long did you do that though cause that, that, when I looked it was like in 2010 or mm -hmm. something like that so how long did you stay in I that? got signed in 2010 to Slip and Slide Records but before okay, I okay Slip I was and Slide on, yeah Ted Lucas shout out to my big Already. homie Ted Lucas, forgive me, and, and Julian and Milk, all them guys down there. But yeah, that was my family. I signed with them in 2010. But I had been doing it before, because I was, you know, I was hustling before yeah. that. And I had got a name in the state. And they came up to Mobile, you know what I'm saying, from Miami. And I drove from Pensacola and performed in front of them, in front of the crowd. And it was like, oh yeah, fly down to Miami tomorrow. I flew down to Miami. But the, the, the contract, at the time I was, you know, getting street money, and they was trying to give me this contract. And I'm like, Phew. <laughs> Not much. That's country wine. I ain't that, doing that, this that, shit. <laughs> you see that on the skits. I was like, yeah, I, this ain't gonna work. So I didn't sign, but then, you know, man, when my mom transitioned, I just like lost myself. I lost and how old were too. you when she transitioned? Twenty nine. Yeah, Still I was about twenty three. Twenty nine. I my my place got my both my businesses got repo. My townhouse got. I got evicted. I had like my credit score. Everything went because I stopped mm -hmm. living. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was homeless yeah. Yeah. before I knew it. And then uh, when I called, I was trying to get back on my feet, trying to get back moving again. Once you know, after about a year or two. And then um, the guy I called, the DJ I called, he was like, "Yo, DJ Smalls." Like, okay, yeah, DJ Smalls. Shout Smalls. out DJ Smalls. Shout out DJ Smalls. He don't even know, but that conversation we had. He changed was like, he changed my life because he was like, man, I said, look, I'm, 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 I'm about to get it going. Now, mind you, I'm broke. I'm living yeah. in a 97 Toyota Corolla. This, I'm thinking I'm hiding at the city. No, I ain't got no damn money. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, y'all? They're like, man, little broke ass. Mike, <laughs> Mike, Mike coming. <laughs> <laughs> the Eddie Kane. The, That's it. I thought I was killing him. I think like, they don't know. They knew. And he was like, man, Mike, I was trying to get him to do a mixtape for me for free because I ain't had no money. I said, bro, I need you to host a mixtape for me. I'm going to jump back out there. He's like, Mike. And I told him my real situation. He's like, bro, you ain't got the money to push this mixtape. If I do it for you, you can't be out here selling CDs by yourself. It's, that's not, it's not like, it ain't going to work. Uh -uh. He was like, you need to cost them a slide and see if they still want to sign you and take the deal. So that's what I did. Damn. Roy Jones Jr. I had a you know I had a case. Shout out Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones, that's my bro, man. That's one of my first mentors in the in the, in the entertainment How industry. How did you and him meet? Man, when I got to Florida, did I skip, a, did I skip something we should for to go into that I needed to go into? Mm -hmm. No, I want to hear about Roy Jones, man. Oh, yeah. you, I'm a man. big Roy Jones fan. I, uh, I, I at his at his just pinnacle of where mm -hmm. he was at, man. I'd have put him up against anybody in his weight class, and I was going to ride with him. He a dog. <laughs> Roy is a different human being. I yeah. thought I was a tough that month. Wasn't Roy Jones like Jamaican or part Jamaican or something? Oh, like here that? we go. Man, why <laughs> do we do this, man? Every episode. I wouldn't be surprised. He, right right one. he part rooster. He be hanging with what the chicken. Yeah, he part rooster <laughs> alligator. There you go. I got what some alligator? stories about Roy, man. Roy ain't no punk. How'd like, you meet him? Um, I met Roy... How did I meet them? I, I started coming around when I moved to Florida, coming around they label, they had body head, and I was like, you know, I, I was like, yo, I was carrying bags. I just wanted to be a part of it. And Roy, he took to my honesty. 
You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Wayne. Like, you know, when you got a guy that's taking care of everybody, people tend to just, they always kissing their ass, telling yeah, them what they want yeah, to hear. Yeah. And I would, I told Roy something one time that I ain't, I ain't going to share, but something that I had disagreed with that happened. And I wasn't like trying to check him or nothing because I was a little bro. Yeah. But he peeped that. You know what I'm saying? And I remember he just he just took to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He really liked me and I and I learned so much from him. He was a he was a good dude, man. Um took me on the road with him. Wow. Yeah, good, real good dude. So you was at a lot of those fights? I didn't go to a lot of the fights. I was on the uh you was on the body head, body head, head. And, uh, that uh uh must have forgotten all that. Yeah, I was on the videos. Wow, I gotta go back, man. I gotta go way in the back. I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> You ain't gonna see me. I'm gonna die. Might get him back like, yeah, man. I'm, I'm in one of the hands in the shadow. Already. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like, um, when you when you get, for how did you meet Country Wayne? And I got to get into that too. And and hold on, what did you want to do as a kid growing up? Is this because you went from martial arts lot. to boxing to um, rapping to like, what is it that you wanted to do? Entertainer. Just just entertainer. entertainer. I'm got like, it. Sammy Davis so you've Jr. always wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. I was a kid. I just wanted to be a famous singer. I just wanted to be a. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be. I just want to entertain. Because it was different back in the days than it is now. Like back in the days, people only wanted to be like a, a actor or mm -hmm. a singer or this. Now it's like you have to be an artist, which is everything all in one. Now. That's it. Yeah. So it's different. Yep. So the. Can I get into the go country ahead, one question? But let me say this. Go That's ahead, why. Go ahead. Go ahead. When I went and saw Ted, he told me, he said, Mike, when I signed you, I knew you was a star. Wow. I just didn't know what to do with you because you did too much. You did too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a guy like that. I love him. I don't know what you, he's like, <laughs> you telling jokes on your page, then you singing, then you rapping, then you boxing. Then you, he's like, I knew you was a star, but he said, bro, I didn't know what to do with you. Mm -hmm. Damn. So like the time now is my, it's like everything is coming just to, to full, full circle, circle because right. it's like oh now this is this fits into this is a new industry of what it is man yeah. it is new um the thing I, I when i first seen you was really like my first time seeing you i'm being real mm -hmm. and um when i seen you i was like man what is what is he doing on here now but you didn't look as big on there for some reason i don't know what the hell <laughs> the camera's tripping you so dude, it, like you look bigger in person than you do on there but I, but they always say you're supposed to look that. bigger on camera than you no, do in person no no this is backwards so but but as it's you all, yeah i promise it is but when you when it's you in, angles yeah when you and country Wayne met uh, or how did y'all how did you even make meet make him. it to meet him like so uh chase Brother, dude named Brett. Shout out to Chase. Chase, okay. Chase Walker. Chase Walker. Chase Walker is the. First of all, let me give him his flowers. The camera. You know how? That's all the iPhone. That's dope. One iPhone. That. I well, the whole filming. Can't nobody do what he do with that. That's Chase. I've always heard that you can do really great skits with an iPhone. But you can't. Can't no, like everybody can't, can't do it. Ain't nobody. Can't nobody. I had a camera guy like that. Remember Tyler's like that. Tyler's like that. Jay Tyler's yeah. like that. There's no cutting. It's not no like. Hold it's on, one cut. camera, and and he's catching the reactions and the. He's serious the about it. He's using a tripod it, too. No, he's using a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's gimbal, what he. Right. Yeah, gimbal. gimbal. Right. Can't listen. Can't nobody do that like he do. He I told Wayne. Me. I told Wayne the other day. I was like Wayne, bro. And Wayne was like, "Oh, I know." Him and Wayne together, they just make magic. They, they make magic, and they they've taught me that like they brought me in and they kind of cultivated me to show me a different. It's a different form. I'm a I'm a trained actor, but this is a different form because it's not usually how we do one take. And then you cut and right. Then we're gonna come, we're gonna go medium. Boom. Okay, when to get your close up? Boom. Yeah, yeah. You know, we getting every so that you catching everything, but with this is like. It makes it so much easier too. No, it's harder. At, it's harder it's like this. So y'all y'all have to do over and over. I mean, no, you, don't, do, no. you do one take. But editing is easier. Editing is easier. Right. Yeah, but that one take, I don't I thought it would be easier than the all these. The it's like a live show. Ain't no cut. It's Ain't like no a cut. live show. It's live. It's if somebody messes on one thing, it could be perfect. If I say one thing wrong, I have, we can't say that because, you know, Damn. we gotta start over. But how many so you times got, do y'all feel good. like it have make to you do better. that, though? For us, our chemistry, probably once or twice. Yeah, so, But okay. because, you know, like, Ro, she been doing it for a while with them, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> so the chemistry, it, we, 
we it don't take us long. But how did you how did you come into that? You it was the camera guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. And then yeah, we gonna get it. <laughs> we gonna yeah. get it. So it was the camera guy that uh that brought yeah. you in. He did he call you or how did how did that happen? Yeah, were you up. in Atlanta or were you in Florida? Where where were you at? I don't know how the hell they found me. I was in Atlanta, but Chase hit me up like yo. And he known like? you how long before that? Well, I'm known in Atlanta as an actor, like in the acting world. No, but Chase knew knew you. No, we didn't know each other okay. like that. So I was. Actor of the Year, AAC, mm -hmm. Green. Was that the magazine? I keep right. thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm known in the acting community in Atlanta, very well known. Mm -hmm. So he knew who I was, you know, but we weren't like friends or like that. He was like, yeah, we're doing this skit. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should do this skit. Right. That actor voice. Dude, like, I'm an actor. I, this is skit you know, people. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be dumbing myself people, down for this scene. Some people scene. would think that skits are below no, them. No, no, I know. No, 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 no right, man. No, some actor. people. Most, most, most people. actors. Yeah, because they, they was like, Mike, what are you doing? Like, bro, you work so hard. And I was just like, ah, I'm just, you know, me, honestly, I'm being real, John. I told Wayne this. I said, bro, when I came on, I had no idea. Like Faison. Oh, we we got I had no idea. Country Wayne is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but Were you watching him before you actually I had, seen, I had seen him before. But we didn't think nothing about it. I, I was like, oh, he's doing the internet stuff. Because internet I, stuff. Because we old. Yeah. Faison yeah. old as hell. I'm Faison, old. Faison, we asked that question. When I asked Faison, I basically was big up in the fact that comedy is taking so many different avenues. Mm -hmm. And when I was asking him that I did not know that he would feel it like tell me, hey man, that's that other shit. But uh, see, I, I didn't saying, know. But that's like asking the dinosaur, hey, how do planes making money? You talking about the big old metal things flying <laughs> in the sky? No. <laughs> that don't make so, no sense. So I, I was, so I understand. I was my mind was like, ah, it's skits. And I, I told Wayne, I'm going to do it to get some followers. I'm like, you know, mm. let me get some more followers on my page so I can get my verification. You know? And at that time, how many followers did you have at that I had 111,000 Okay, when I met Wayne. So I do the first skit with him. I was supposed to come and be Blake's daddy. Okay. Out, and then I was supposed to do about three or four and be gone. Yeah. Came. I remember that episode when you came with Blake. I'm like, oh. I was in this? and out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, me, man, not just Wayne, but because his team is his family, his brothers. Yeah. You know, Harvey and Tay, his kids, and then Ro. Yeah. It's a family. And I just fit right in. Yeah, I, I just fit, and I felt like, like I knew these people forever. You know what I'm saying? And then Wayne, I don't meet dudes and be like, man, this is like my brother, man. I really love that dude. Yeah, like he's a, he is a that let me genuine tell you spirit. That's what it is. You ain't gonna meet no celebrity at that. And this is the thing. This is why people don't think he's so big, like Faison. because of how he carry yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. he ain't walking around with 1,100 chains on the neck. He mm -hmm. taking care of. 700 people. Mm. Wow. Wayne took care of his whole family. And he's still living like a king. When I went to that nigga house, I was like, nigga, what else you do? <laughs> I thought this nigga was still selling dope. <laughs> and that's not, that wasn't a new house that he just bought. That's no, he just old... got a new house. Right. He got a million dollars of furniture. I bought that man house. That's what threw me off. Because he was like, yo, we gonna, yo, we want to bring you on full time. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll do, I'll do it full time. Because I first of all, it was just the chemistry with them. And I was it was fun, you know? Yeah. I went in that nigga house. I was like, "Okay, what else do you do?" Wow! <laughs> and he man. broke. It. So as we as I got closer to him, he started because you know, it. yeah, because he want everybody to win. He right. like, bro, you got two hundred and seventy thousand followers. You ain't making no money. Are you crazy? I'm like, I can make money. He showed you. He showed me. And when I tell you. Faison, I don't know what the hell he talking about. There are so many different avenues nowadays compared to what it was. Now, Faison spoke on the residuals that he make. Let me tell you something about residuals. Faison say he got residuals. Listen, I'm telling man. you, he didn't he say yeah, that? Yeah, because he's been doing work for, okay. for a long ever time. Since, ever since Friday. Okay, right. let's talk about residuals. Let's compared talk about residuals. to what you're doing now. In the 90s, your residuals ain't shit right now. Unless it's friends. Y'all know I get residuals. I'm a professional actor. So, yeah, okay, I get, I made, I did um, Raising Dion. I did about okay. 100, 125000 off of that, something like that. There, as When the residuals come in, they get smaller. Yeah, as time goes longer. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. That's a real, that's any actor. Mm -hmm. It go all the way down, you get a check for six cents. I've got a check for six cents before. Mm -mm. 
Mm. That's bullshit. That's a waste you ain't get no paper. don't know yeah. residuals come in from the nineties and you just like, oh, I'm just sitting back in all this money. That's some bullshit. I'm an actor. We a lot of people tell them that because we we don't want to let people know that. that I'm a comedian. I'm gonna keep it real. But but he <laughs> said is. but he says his friends on the Forbes list to do comedy. Okay, let's talk about numbers. <laughs> we we ain't got to talk about Google and Forbes. Let me talk, let's talk numbers. Okay. The skits. Let's say you got a, you have a let's say you had a, a hair hair business and you got a clothing business, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And y'all, y'all, how do TV? How do you make money on TV? How do the TV shows make money? Is it because of the people that's picked up and they the network pay ads? Ads. Ads. Yeah. Commercials yeah. and ads Commercials is how you ads. make money. Right. I get it. Okay. Boom. You got your hair. You got your clothing. We hey, all right, we ready? We, we, gonna, we gonna make a move. We got to invest in some ads. Mm-hmm. Snowfall is the number one show on FX. Right now. Great yes. show. Mm-hmm. Five million views a week. Five, that's a lot. Right. Right? They got 10 episodes. Let's get the calculator out. So five million. Times 10. Times 10 is 50 million views. Now, hold on. Y'all ain't made our decision yet. Y'all still shopping around. Now, Country Wayne does... A million views a day. Mm-hmm. So that's seven million views a week. But the difference is, he ain't got 10 episodes. He got 52 weeks. So times 52. That's 364 million views. Damn. Now let me ask you, with your hair business, mm-hmm. who, you gonna put your, who you gonna put your money, who, who y'all putting your ass on? I'm going to put my ass where the most, yeah, Country Wayne. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So times is different. Times and So times. what happens is when you, and, and I understand where Faison's coming from because Faison's an alpha male. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about, when you talk about basketball, somebody from the LeBron era, we want to make sure our era stands strong. Man, Jordan, Jordan, yeah. Jordan's 6'6", 196 pounds. For sure. LeBron is 6'9", 270 and jumped the same height. Evolution is a motherfucker. Right. You talking about David Robinson, Kevin Durant, the same size as David Robinson, shooting from half court. Mm-hmm. It's evolution. But you know, we as men, we got this thing called ego. We want to make sure our shit, man, I know this, I know that. We ain't done, though. <laughs> we ain't done. <laughs> so basically, he getting paid from Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, right? He's making... He don't get paid from t- from TikTok or any of those nah, other avenues nah, yet? Because it's not long enough. He do three minutes. Three minutes. So he's making four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month from the social media. Damn, I've seen it. I ain't talking about it. this. Ain't no, this ain't no Google. This ain't no. I've seen you it. live it. I, yeah, we live it. I'm getting listen. This fifty five. <laughs> so, I live it. He live it. I'm he live that, this. I'm giving some of that money too. <laughs> So just so y'all know, <laughs> this this is a, this is an AP bust down. This ninety. I mean, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying this right. ninety. No, this I, get it. Right. I get it. I get it. This social media money. Now, my I ain't got money like Wayne, but anyway. So <laughs> and this should be motivation for any of y'all who trying to come who's up trying to get on. It's motivation, right? Because I want my thing is I'm not I'm not saying I'm not trying to attack Faison. Right. I'm not trying to brag. I hate that we as the people are always the last to know how to get the damn money. Exactly. exactly. And that's the good thing about this episode is that people will be able to look at it and say, I need to investigate and how it, I can get it's me not even that educated they, about it's not even platforms. To know how some people know how, but it's too scared to get up off their behind to, to tackle it. That's really and what it is. You need to get off your behind because it's on <laughs> your phone. You can do it this you is at. TV. Everybody, this is the new TV. Let me ask you a question. I hear Gary Vaynerchuk say that I a lot. It all the Let time. me ask you a question. Now you say y'all forget the views. How many times? How much time you sit down and watch TV in the day? When I eat, that's it. That's it. How many times I, you pick I this thing up? I force myself to do it too. How many times you pick this thing all right day here long. all day long? That's why everybody got a podcast. That because mm-hmm. it's evolution, people. If you want to ride a horse from New York to California, that's your damn business. <laughs> I'm getting on the plane. <laughs> me what too. The, what these niggas talking about? Exactly. Let me tell you something. Else. We ain't done. So that's four hundred fifty thousand a month. So four hundred fifty thousand. Time. And Wayne didn't want me to do this because Wayne be like, I already say, know it. Let me tell you how Wayne is. Wayne be, he we be laughing. We gotta explain this. There's so many people hating on Wayne right now, and and I be like, bro, he be like, but why they hate on him? Because he seemed like a such why a. Why they hate on LeBron? Because you at the top. You at the top. You gotta. We get, ain't yeah. done. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm, I'm about to show you why they hating on him. That's 5.4 million from his social media. Okay, now 
as comedians saying, Wayne well, ain't no man, he ain't no real comedian. Oh, what you gotta do? Do stand up comedy, right? That's, That's right. right. Let's talk about that. Matter of fact, I'll come to the show this weekend. Uh, we are the 30th Houston. Show? I get y'all tickets. Oh, okay. Get them tickets. I got we coming. Tickets. Awesome. You, we coming? Talking, you want to come to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we got them too. tickets. Oh, oh, we're coming. Oh, we're coming. Okay. So, so now that's 5.4 5.4 million, right? Mm-hmm. We're on a 30 city tour with Live Nation. Wayne is just Wayne. And I ain't going to say no other comedians names cuz some of these other comedians are some of my favorite comedians. They're doing package shows. If you look on right now, try I want you to find one comedian. Find one black comedian right now that's doing shows by themselves. You ain't gonna find it. Wayne does clean comedy because he's a hustler. And Wayne, when you go to Wayne's show, you have people in their 20s who love drip mm-hmm. all the way to their 60s from church because he don't curse. That's right. So when we go to these shows, I, and, I, and I tell Wayne, no, I tell him, uh, uh, bruh, like, you shock it because I'm with him every day. And he's, every so, day. he's so regular. He's just chilling. And when you go to these shows, you're like, this nigga is like Michael Jackson. When Wayne come out, I'm talking about these is, he's selling out theaters. They paying this wow. man 75000 a night. We got 30, guaranteed. Let's do the math on that. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't that done. So that's, that's 75000 That's a lot. Yeah. Times and how 30. often does he do shows? We do thir- every weekend. So every that's, weekend. So that's 2.2 plus 4.5 million. Sorry, Wayne. Telling you, Ben. So now we at, we at about $7 million, right? Wow. Now we ain't going to talk about the investments. Yeah. So Wayne, this Plus year. Because you got to pay everybody. No, I'm talking about the investments he's okay. investing. So now we're looking at then the endorsements. Then we ain't talking about the money for every time he do a video. Like we was in, for instance, we see him do a video with, and he, a rapper or somebody he featuring, they paid for that spot. Fifteen thousand. Mm. When we ate the, the lot, we was eating the shrimp and all that stuff. When we was in Louisiana, Louisville, mm-hmm. he paid Wayne fifteen thousand for that skit wow. to tag him. We ain't talking about that money. Wayne is going is is at ten million dollars this year. Just this year, Wayne is thirty four. When Kevin Hart was thirty four, he was at seven point five million. What is these niggas talking about? A <laughs> man. What is these niggas? We talking man. about? That's see what I'm saying. So so. Forbes list, you got to start somewhere. At 34 years old, 10 million, and the biggest comedian right now, Kevin Hart, was at 7.5. And Wayne didn't even put a movie out yet. What? He didn't even put a movie out yet. When I tell you that Hollywood is, they knocking at the door, not like this. They banging They knocking like the feds. Trying to get that boy in there. Because if I can make $10 million and I don't even got to leave my cell phone, you know what they thinking. Ooh. Wow. We'll we'll put up $100 in them. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but the way how y'all move, I can see him doing his own movie. Not we already to, shot it. Oh, <laughs> so I'm you know saying, better. Okay, but, right. We already shot it. But, but right. the thing, the, rather the, than going through them, the, the just thing, do everything yourself. To convince, to convince everybody, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, um, that this is the route to go. Because everybody can't do this though. First of all, let me let me back up a little bit. Everybody nah, can't do can't. this, bro. I, and, and it looks simple. Because I see it, mm-hmm. but I understand because of the world that I've built around me. And I know that people look at the finishing of, of what one does and mm-hmm. think it's easy. It I'm telling easy. you. It's a gift. But you know what? Everybody does have a gift that can be shown to make money off of. 